that I'm here at Stansted Airport just outside of London where 85% of the flights here go in and out of Europe. Mostly low-cost airlines packed with British and European holidaymakers. Now those flights right now don't need any special permission to land and take off. But today in its latest technical no-deal papers, the government gave warning that there would be no automatic permission to fly in and out of the EU and that UK flight safety certificates would not be recognised by the EU. Now, it hopes to strike a multilateral deal on both these areas, but concedes there will be some disruption in the event that doesn't happen. Now, earlier I spoke to one of the bosses here at Stansted and some of the passengers to gauge their reaction to today's warning. What are the biggest obstacles still that have prevented you from already signing some kind of deal? Yeah, I mean, we would like to see this clarified as soon as possible. But we recognise this is being sort of tied up in some of the wider political negotiations that are going on at the moment. But the EU and the UK, I think, recognise what needs to be done. And I think the technical notices set out a very clear plan for doing that. Uh, and we think that could be done with the right commitment on both sides very quickly. So what you're essentially saying is you can get on with it, but politics is getting in the way. Yeah, to a degree it, it is. And I think those technical, practical steps do need to be taken very quickly. What happens if you can't get a deal? You say you're confident you can, but what happens then? What happens then? Uh, well, I Flights, think... your planes out there remain on the tarmac. I think that's an, an extremely unlikely scenario. It's one that we can't absolutely rule out, but we think there is enough mutual interest here between the EU and the UK. There are 164 million passengers flying backwards and forwards between the UK and the EU every year. That, I think, provides enough incentive for everybody to get round the table and sort this out. Would you book a flight for that weekend next March when we are due to leave the EU or would you just think, no way? No, I, th I think I would book with confidence. Would you book a flight for next year, post-March, when we've left the EU already? Do you have enough confidence? Um, no. <laughs> I wouldn't book within um, the European Union. Thank you. Why? Uh, because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't think anyone knows what's going to happen in March. Would I book my holiday personally now? No, and I haven't booked my holiday now. Now, John, the key word here is confidence. Aviation bosses today keen to stress that they are ready to pick up the pieces if the government can't reach a deal. They want passengers to know that everything is fine, that they are free today to book flights post-March 2019 when we leave the EU. But as you just heard from passengers there, they are extremely wary. Now, in total today, there were 25 technical notices covering a vast swathe of industries and all sorts of potential issues. For instance, pets, dogs and cats, and even the government warns our furry friend, the ferret, will need to see the vet four months before travelling to the EU in the event of a no deal. Haulage firms even being warned that they may not have the necessary permits to drive off their ferries and told to look for different routes or use unaccompanied trailers and containers as opposed to lorries. Once again then, John, a whole load, a vast swathe of technical information for businesses on the what-if scenarios. Businesses' response, though, what they're keen to stress is the what-ifs will cost us, British business, and therefore the economy dear. So what they are pushing for, what they want to hear, is some form of agreed deal as soon as possible. Downing Street has insisted the Cabinet remains fully behind Theresa May's plans for the future after Brexit. However, Conservative Brexiteers are piling the pressure on the Prime Minister to ditch her Chequers proposals. The former Brexit Secretary David Davis said Theresa May's policy was in a cul-de-sac adding that ministers should ditch it in favour of a plan by the Free Market Institute for Economic Affairs backing a Canada-style free trade agreement. Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, has this. And we stand ready. On Friday, the Prime Minister told the nation talks with the EU had stalled. Today, she told her cabinet something similar, then sent her Brexit secretary out to say that didn't mean the government was changing tack. We had a good, healthy discussion. The Prime Minister made clear we're going to keep our calm, hold our nerve and press the EU on some of the 
uh, criticisms that, that they've made, but also to be clear that there are no credible alternatives that the EU has come up with. So we're going to hold our nerve, but continue to negotiate in good faith. The slapdown for her plans delivered at the Salzburg summit last week has re-energised attempts by some Tories to switch government strategy, to looser ties with Europe, more like the Canadian Free Trade Agreement. Today, some of those critics came to praise a report on how that might work. This has been offered to us by the Commission. They have offered us the best trade deal they have done with any country ever in the world. So if you want to call it Canada Plus or Super Canada or Super Califragilistic Expialidocious Canada, that is what is being aimed at and it's being offered. This report says the UK should move away from European food regulations and towards American ones to help with trade deals. It also says the government should cut environment and workers' rights laws too. That isn't the only way to have a trade policy. That is this particular approach to having a trade policy. Is It's a very deregulatory one, and it's a US versus EU one. We'd be more like America, less like Europe. That's correct. That's correct. Signs in the crowd today of a shift of Tory opinion against checkers. You, you were a Remainer. You're quite a loyalist. You don't regularly uh, dissent from the leadership. And yet here you are. Here. This is a bad omen, isn't it, about the amount of dissent there is in Theresa May's own party, your party, about checkers. Well, I'm not making any comment on that. But what I am saying is I'm maybe looking... Maybe I could tempt you. <laughs> uh, I'm looking dispassionately... Maybe your very appearance here is a comment enough. Well, I'm looking dispassionately at the different options that might be available between a free trade agreement uh, and the checkers' proposals and whatever other proposals there are out there. Do you see another ministerial hemorrhage? on the way. I think it's conceivable that other ministers could leave the government, yes, but you know, I'm very clear what I've always stood for. For two years I've been trying to pump just this set of ideas into government. Before I was a minister, while I was a minister... Could she withstand after. it if more left? Uh, well, I don't know. I think it remains to be seen. Is uh, Chequers still the right plan? I'm absolutely confident we're going to get a good deal with the EU. There were no dissenting voices at Cabinet today, but full-throated support for the Prime Minister's plan is hard to find. Danger may have been delayed, but not averted. You might think that with the Brexit policy stalled, as the Prime Minister was saying on Friday, there would be a great big discussion at the first Cabinet meeting uh, to follow that. There was nothing of the sort. I'm told that uh, just towards the end of a fairly long Cabinet meeting, uh, the Prime Minister said uh, that her policy remained the policy. There was no discussion and that is how Theresa May wants to manage these awkward moments. There are, though, pro-Leave ministers, some who uh, even were pro-Remain, who have their doubts about her strategy now. One of them said that they were still looking at making a move to try and shift policy after the October EU summit, so not doing that immediately. As Siobhan was saying earlier in the programme, one of the big stories, of course, to come out of that cabinet was the uh, no deal technical papers. What would Britain do in the event of uh, no deal? Those seem to be, uh, although they were devised to try and show Brussels that Britain could cope with such a, a thing, walking out of the talks uh, if they didn't like the deal, uh, they seem to be at the moment terrifying in some ways uh, the, the British government more than they are the Brussels uh, people on the other side of the table. Most of the discussion was about immigration policy. The Cabinet seems to have gone along with the idea of a non-discriminatory approach. We will not have a pro-EU immigration policy uh, uh, outlined by the Prime Minister when she comes to her conference. We'll expect to hear more about it there.